is not going to get that man today. No, because I'm going to get him. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, viewers and listeners from coast to coast and worldwide to a very special Monday edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. I'm Doug Hagman. I'm the founder and director of the Northeast Intelligence Network. With me is my co-host, Joe Hagman. Together we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. is heard live every weekday, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. It's uh, great to be with you folks. We have a lot of news today to cover. Yeah, I mean a lot. Yeah, we do. There's uh, news developing. Um, as we're getting ready for the show uh, today, I learned <laughs> about uh, earthquakes happening in California. Um, California earthquake swarms leave residents yeah. on edge. There were over 30 earthquakes. Uh, Down on the southern 30 earthquakes. border. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, report, uh, the swarm was the strongest in 30 years, and there was one uh, 5.0 at 6, 16 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I hope everybody's okay. I have not seen reports of damage of that yet, but uh, very unusual earthquake activity. Uh, also, other news. Time to bring Stan Dale on for his take in this. Yeah, we have hurricane or tropical storm Isaac soon to be predi predicted to be a hurricane, yes. uh, and some very chilling anomalies. Uh, the seven-year anniversary, exactly seven-year anniversary after Katrina, another hurricane developing in the Gulf, um, looking to hit Louisiana. But will it be a strong uh, hurricane or not? Uh, we're still not sure on it, that, but one thing they are sure is that it is going to hit the Gulf region uh, between Mississippi. It's already affecting Florida, um, and yep. they say it's uh, on the same track as Katrina, which is uh, pretty... Well, well, what caught my eye, though, was or my ears, was the fact that this is named Isaac, mm -hmm. and of and course, the name. Beginning. You know, I, I don't, uh, I've got a bad feeling about this. I, I do. Um, it, it's, uh, it's not really, in, in, it's not settled. Uh, this bad feeling is not situated in, in any one particular thing, except the fact that we as a nation, I believe, have turned our back on, uh, on Israel. And I know that during, and more importantly, uh, the Lord, the very yes, yes, and 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 I and I would like to I would like people's opinions on this, callers' opinions on this as well today. Six six one two four four nine eight three nine is the number to call in, and definitely press the button to talk with the host if you want to speak with us. That way, we know that you're in queue, and we'll we don't screen calls here. But we do want to uh, definitely uh, get your opinion on this. Yeah, and uh, they say that this Isaac, um, the focus is on New, New Orleans as Isaac takes dead aim at the city seven years after Katrina. Right. But the impact will be felt well beyond city limits. The storm's winds could be felt more than 200 miles from uh, the storm center. But no, now, I don't think hurricanes respect uh, geographical boundaries. No. Now the storm, they, they say the lingering effects of the storm in Florida are affecting the uh, convention that they have going on there. And uh, also power, there are 60,000 people without power in Florida as a result of the storm so far, and it has not even done the damage uh, that it's, you know, set up to do in the United States. But I know it has hit Haiti, and uh, there is some damage and victims in Haiti also from the storm. So we've got to keep our eye on it. Uh, they say because of the low-lying areas in New Orleans and Mississippi that the flooding, it does not take much to flood those areas. And even though they've been working on the levees since Hurricane Katrina, some of them are still not repaired, some of them are not finished, and are not strong Gee, enough. Well, what a surprise. We have Janet Napolitano uh, running around, you know, urging people about them. I mean, I've never seen the Department of Homeland Security, uh, whose main focus really for the last, uh, weak, except for the RNC, DNC, and hurricane. 
Why? It's FEMA. It's not DHS. No, but Jenna Napolitano has been commenting on it and uh, making statements and, um, you know. Well, I, I want to alert everybody, and I want to apologize if Judy uh, McLeod is listening. I want to apologize to her. I, I was supposed to have some uh, document to her. Folks, watch uh, Canada Free Press. Uh, first of all, she's got a terrific article up today. Uh, she wrote uh, just a fantastic article about uh, the upcoming elections and about Obama. That's CanadaFreePress.com, and uh, I just want to apologize to her. I, I did not submit what I was going to submit. I was... Uh, waiting on some additional information, which I do have, uh, but I, I haven't been able to put it together. I've been, uh, um, it's, trust me when I say it's just been one of those days. Um, yeah, I want to make an announcement before you do this. To really to, go, to, go ahead. You know what? You break the news. Well, I just, uh, I'll leave you with I this show. Work. Tomorrow's show, we're going to have special guests Greg Evenson and Steve Quayle on from 9 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time, 7 to 10 Mountain Time. That's right. 6 to 9 Pacific time. Um, we are going to be joined by those two wonderful gentlemen, and it's going to be a powerful show. Last time was uh, one of the best shows I think we've had. I talked um, to Steve this morning, and, he, and he's very excited about it, and Greg is just, Greg is Greg. I mean, I've got to tell you, this guy is good. Yeah. I mean, he so is really good. Put it on your calendars, wherever you mark, mark it down. Tomorrow, 9 p.m. to midnight Eastern time, Greg Evenson, Steve really? Quayle, and myself and my father and for those of you listening live uh if you would like to watch us you can go to homeland security the number one dot tk wait, wait, wait isn't there a u.s in there or no i'm sorry homeland security u.s the number one dot tk all right and you can go there and watch us live uh during our live shows and also go to cuban one on youtube to catch uh the archived uh, video broadcast if, yeah, you like. if you want. Also, uh, we don't ever do this. Team K9. Uh, we have a Team K9 Facebook, Twitter, um, and we have a Northeast Intelligence Network Twitter yes, account. We do. Yes, we do. And uh, we just have been seeing an influx in people and also a Hagman and Hagman Report Facebook page. So if you are on Facebook, the Hagman and Hagman Report or Team K9 or the Northeast Intelligence Network all have pages. We put our information, episode updates, articles, uh, all go up there uh, as soon as we get them done. So check those sites out. Like them if you have not yet already. And those are the announcements I wanted to make. Very good. Well, on Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen, Wednesday we've got a special program. Uh, Marika Peshman, who's been on uh, GBTV, you know, on, on Glenn Beck uh, Television, and uh, she, well, she, other places, she's the author of... Uh, the whistleblower. She's going to be on with us for the first hour on Wednesday. I'm very excited about that. Marinka Peshman. She's been on with us before, but um, she's got some information about uh, uh, well, some analysis uh, that is pertinent to what we're looking at right now with respect to uh, the current goings on in our government. And uh, again, I, I just want to direct uh, people to Canada Free Press first thing in the morning. Uh, that's CanadaFreePress.com. First thing in the morning, uh, I've got a, I've got, I've got an article, uh, some more information from my DHS insider source. Yeah, I know and, you uh, talked to him uh, earlier. Uh, we talked about that. Yeah. Probably the first time I was included in uh, knowledge before it came out in an article uh, about what was talked about. But that's right. Um, yeah, look for that tomorrow. Actually, he snuck on my desk and uh, looked at my desktop and said, "Hey, what's this?" Yeah, you know, as any good investigator would do, and and, and that's that's the that, that's good. But uh, you know, as I was, I got to tell you this, Joe, and, and then we're going to move on to to serious news. Yeah. When I was, uh, I had, uh, I, I of course he 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 was gallivanting this weekend, and and, and today he was. I guess it must be it must be nice to be, re, be retired at twenty eight, right? I am not retired. I. Yeah. Yeah. My wife took a short trip uh, about 90 miles away yeah. to my best friend and his wife's house, and we had uh, went out to a real nice dinner one night and had a barbecue the next night, and it was a nice short vacation. And uh, yes, I like to enjoy myself. Yeah. In, in the meantime, fun. in the meantime, I, I'm stuck here, you know, trying to plug leaks—not physical leaks, but plug leaks and you know, put out fires and what have you. And I <laughs> uh, finish investigations and. 
uh, I got to a point where, folks, I don't know, I, well, I've got tremendous back problems, and I, I was, uh, my back was so, so uh, spasms. I was, uh, I was laying on the floor uh, for about 20 minutes today, and uh, just uh, it was like I couldn't see straight. But I was thinking, uh, how about this for a T-shirt? Because we're, we're, we are, uh, we're working with a company locally here, American-made shirts, uh, Hagman the Hagman Report polo shirts. I don't know what you guys think of that, uh, and T-shirts, but how about a T-shirt with handprints all over it? Uh, with something like TSA, more than just a feeling. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, you, know, you know, something to that effect. I, I again, I was, you know, that's pretty good. Maybe like it's that. Too, too much ibuprofen or something. I, I don't know, but uh, but you know, it, it's um, yeah, more than just a feeling with handprints all over the T-shirt. I don't know. Okay, so let's get into some heavy. Yeah, I'm going to uh, get into some, some news some first news. here. Uh, one of the headlines that caught my eyes today: uh, Feds, too few Americans turn to government for assistance. It says more Americans rely on their families for assistance than the governments. So, uh, federal officials have undertaken an effort to help people to apply for federal assistance. Given that only 15% of you turn <laughs> to government assistance in tough times, we want to make sure you know about the benefits that could help you. The U.S. Uh, government announced today. Yeah. The government made easy website has called or has created a help for difficult financial times page for people to learn more about the programs. The government got the statistic from a poll asking Americans what helps them the most during tough times, and here are the results: 44% said savings. Check. 21% said family. Check. Five or 20% said credit cards or loans. Bad. And 15% said government assistance. Why not? Let's um, pile on, right? Right. And this is the things that help them most during tough times. So, so well, okay. help 44% of the people surveyed most of the times. Family, 21% of the times. So the problem is the government uh, has a problem with you getting help from your family or having to go to, into your savings to help yourself. They want to step in and... Uh, right. Give yeah. away more taxpayer money, more stuff that isn't theirs to people who don't need it. But but do people but understand that. though? But do you understand that people understand that you have money in the savings account? How much are you making? What, 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 right. What's your APR? Right. Uh, or your interest rate uh, that, that you're making? Right. Nothing now. If you have your money in the savings, I mean, right. You're, you're, it doesn't even pay to have your money in the no, savings. No. And I remember, you know, I'm not that old, but I remember a time when. Uh, oh, don't start that. It's going to make me feel... My papa old. had uh, you know, some money in the bank, and he showed us one time the interest he made off that money. And there was a lot of money made off the interest, especially when you look at it now. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Well, Dr. Chappie asked a question in the chat room, should I cash in my 401k right now? Uh, and and I, I've been getting some emails about that as well. And, and I, I've been directing those emails to... Uh, I've been telling people, look... Watch Gerald Salente, watch Max Kaiser, watch people, and, and can, like, look at Ann Barnhart as well. Look at the financial people that uh, are not part of the creation of this problem that we're in. There's a, a top headline on Steve Quayle say, get your money out of Morgan Stanley fast. So uh, yeah, uh, if right. your money's tied into there, you might want to check that article out. That, now this, there, okay, we've got it on really good authority. And, and this, I didn't talk to you about this, but uh, since it's on Steve Quayle's site, uh, there's a bank that's going to be to, taking a, a, a dive, like you know, much like Bear Stearns did, oh. an investment bank, a huge investment bank. It's going to be going belly up and bankrupt. We saw all the, uh, the, well, at least we saw the few people that were mentioned, like the Soroses, the John Paulson, right. the Rothschilds, who sold their stock in Citibank and J.P. Morgan and Correct. all these financial financial institutions and turned to gold. And um, I'm sure there are many more unnamed people who did the same exact thing. And what do they know that we don't know? Well, we do know that there is going to be some kind of economic collapse, well, hyperinflation. Uh, there has to be. It's, it's pretty uh, good. Look, you know, it's it, it a matter great. of when, you know. Well, yeah, when you can get your insider information, like, hey, uh, you know, the, the vice president, you can talk to the vice president, or you can have a, a dinner for 50 grand or 30 grand for, with the president. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's like the insider's club. But, and like John Collins says, you know, this is a big club, and you ain't in it. I, Neither are we. I was looking at it from the other side today, thinking, you know, if you wanted to create economic chaos and panic, 
these people don't care. It's not a burden to them to right. pull their money out of Citibank and invest in gold where they know it's going to be safe. It wouldn't be a burden to them if they lost all their money they had invested in those banks. No. It was a ploy to create some kind of fear and preemptively cause uh, some kind of economic problems or turmoil? Or is this a real, uh, you know, they're doing this simultaneously publicly to, well, I mean, there's always an agenda behind the story. And the agenda for that story, I don't think, was, you know, too much truth. Not when they're giving so many details about how much gold they're buying and how many percent of their uh, you know, well, China China companies they're putting in the gold. But I'm just saying, that there's always a possibility that they're doing this to, like you said, with um, another story, like the Olympics, how they put all the stuff out there and nothing happened. It makes people who are looking for uh, these signs to, you yeah. know, it makes them look bad. So the date um, setters, right? The, the people would say, look, something is going to happen. And, and I hope, folks, that if we ever say that, you call us on it. Mm-hmm. Because if I ever say, look, on, on uh, October 29th, uh, there's going to be a, an asteroid strike in the Mediterranean and, you know, upset the, uh, uh, well, the I, you know, whatever, the grape uh, harvest. I can tell you this for sure. On February 13th, 2013, there will be an asteroid that will be coming very close to Earth. Well, I got any asteroids uh, before but, uh, on record. But you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. I so when we start, look, we never date set. And, and I think that, uh, so, and, I, and I was looking at uh, one of the website, or one of the web forums, and uh, because we're growing as rapidly as we're growing, we're getting a lot of attention, both good and bad. And of course, they call us profits for profit. Well, we're not profits. We're not even close to profits. And certainly, the profit, P R O F I T, uh, boy, that's a, that's more than a stretch. Uh, you know, it's it's break even, but but but. But profits for profit, that, that's rather insulting because we don't predict anything. And if we ever do, if we ever say, look, uh, on this date, this is going to happen, uh, yeah, I, we should be investigated because I'll tell you what, um, we, you know. I, I just want to address a problem here. Oh, Something in the chat room alerted me to. Uh, the video yes. stream is yes. Homeland Security US, the number one, dot TK. Okay. Okay. Somebody else said they went to this address, which they left up in something. Well, that's and because got a explicit site. So make sure. Wait a minute. An explicit, like a porn site? Is yeah. that what you're saying? That's what they say. Yeah. So make sure you type in the number one. Ooh. <laughs> well, now, now here. Okay. See, here's something that. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. This is. Uh, oh man. I'm not sure. I haven't checked it out. Okay. Uh, See, he, he, look, folks, we have a problem. And, and again, I'm going to be real quick with this. Um, we have people that actually are, are trying, yeah, to, trying to redirect our site, our legitimate sites to porn sites. Especially the more we talk about Christianity, the more we talk about Judeo Christian things. It, I'm serious. I, I've gotten emails saying, hey, um, log on your site. And uh, saw, you know, some pretty graphic stuff. And so I called my ISP, and, and I said, well, you know, well, what's going on? And, well, uh, we, long and short of it is we had to uh, get, uh, like, an extra little bit of insurance within the ISP that, that protects, I don't know what it does, but all I know, it's like $2.99 a month that that's protects for that stuff. Yeah, he said, uh, okay. yeah. So, anyway. Um, but bad. Okay, yeah. And, and the other thing, too. Um, I, I told you about Marika Peshman, and of course tomorrow night, nine to twelve, Steve Quayle and Greg Evenson. Marika Peshman, normal time. Normal time. Okay. Uh, and, and like I said, call in, folks, six six one two four four nine eight three nine. Okay. I, I have something else on my mind, but we'll uh, be taking calls the whole show. Um, and getting back to the this article, yeah, uh, said too few Americans. Oh, that, that was their government assistance. Uh, there was another article, farmer. Uh, farmers, it was a system that failed us. Mm-hmm. Um, it talks about uh, a bunch of farmers who have had to sell their dairy cows, some of their prize-winning dairy cows, um, because they they don't have any water or food to feed their cattle anymore, beca- and they're losing money daily. Right, and you're going to uh, see the price of beef go way, way, way down. They say, really quick. Yeah, this family and these people say that, you know, we're just trying to hold on to things, uh, they keep hoping things are going to change, the grass is going to grow, rain will be here, and it just did not happen. Uh, they, she said he would never have thought he'd need to close the 
farms because of the rain, um, at least now. Triple-digit temperatures and spare, sparse rain this summer produced one of the most severe and widespread droughts in the U.S. in a half century. And we've talked about this. Uh, most headlines are focused on the extent of the drought. The fact is that uh, it enveloped more than half the country or that temperatures in July were the hottest in any month on the record. Now, um, this has done tremendous damage in rural communities that depend on uh, on agriculture for their income, right. because they say right here it's an earth-shattering event that so many dairy farmers uh, from southern Missouri all the way you know to Texas to, um, are losing. You know, by, they're having to sell off or they're losing uh, their crops, their farms, their co uh, cattle. You know, their, whatever their herd is, and uh, they say it's frightening. And to add to it, the Obama administration. Earlier this month, announced emergency drought assistance that included uh, low interest loans and federal buyup of livestock products to keep the people and small farmers in business. However, they've been delayed, uh, and the governor said that they're not going to give out the money because it's like putting a band aid uh, on a big issue uh, rather than fixing the real solution. And they go into talking about the price of corn, um, doubled from July 2010 to 2012. Up seven dollars and thirty six cents a bushel. I'm telling you, it's crazy. The price of corn is crazy. Uh, I want to address this real quick in, in the chat room, uh, folks. Uh, uh, Rick Wiles. Uh, yeah, I noticed that uh, uh, we haven't seen an update from him since Friday. I'm going to check to make sure he's okay. Um, we, we have a system in place where where, where I, I, we would know if he wasn't yeah. okay. Trust me, um, we would know quickly if he wasn't. Now, we haven't updated since Friday either, uh, and that's because, you know... But apparently, he didn't have a show today, if that's what I'm understanding from the chat room. Well, he, would, would, he might put it up. He might have had a show, and he might put it up later. I don't know. It's usually up around, what, 5, 4, 5, 6 o'clock. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll double-check at the break to make sure he's okay and, and check in with you folks. Okay, guys? Okay. All right. Uh yeah, uh, and to uh, pro tracker it, because you weren't here. But apparently, you, you you weren't listening in class earlier. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to stay after. We get a lot of people that we get a lot of people that uh, enter, you know, after the show. <clears> okay, start, so uh, so we're gonna make this announcement one more time. Both uh, people. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you too. Uh, he's on tomorrow, nine to twelve, with Greg Evenson. Thank you, Dan's buddy. Great great job. All right. Okay, moving on. Look. Um, yeah, we well, got some we got some serious things here that that are really disturbing in our spirit. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, this article from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation: <sighs> Global development food shortages could force world into vegetarianism. Warned scientists. I'd have uh, a hard time with that, folks. I don't know about you guys. Soy dogs and free vaccines for all. The earliest strategic mm. decisions that Becky and I made about where we were going to live. We're driven by factors related to freshwater availability. If we didn't have sufficient water for gardens and livestock, we knew we would be buying more food, which would increase our chances of consuming GM food. Genetically modified food. And, and again, here's that push now, mm -hmm. right? And this, goes, this is somebody commenting on the article who is leading into this article, Bill Gates, right? Right. And it says, uh, making sure that you have clean air, water, and food are, are minimum ben, uh, baselines for your lifestyle. You have... No doubt noticed how difficult it is to attain like, organic food, raw right. milk, etc., and it's not going to get any easier. This is what Bill Gates' publication said. Leading water scientists have issued one of the uh, yeah. sternest warnings yeah, this is on the Guardian, about folks. global food supplies, saying that the world's population may have to switch almost completely to a vegetarian diet over the next 40 years to avoid catastrophic shortages. Human... Uh, yeah, we about love. twenty percent of their protein from animal-based yeah. products now, but this may need to drop by five percent to feed the extra two billion people expected to be alive by twenty fifty, according to research from some of the world's leading yeah, water. I, I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that population to make, explosion. To make a long story short, they say dire warnings to the Water Society limiting food production uh, will help uh, spur the UN to step in and pretty much manage and uh, dictate how much water you know you will have and there it is folks. even in the u.s the u.n will have the um power to say you know you do not have 
uh, access to your own water. You can have X amount of gallons a day. The UN will delegate that water. This is part of Agenda 21. Um, and, and, and you know what? Also, but, but, carbon taxes. They're, they're pushing for carbon taxes right. in the New York Times. That's a whole different story we're going to get into. But, but, but Brian and Judy were talking about the UN. Uh, this is about three or four years ago. They were talking about these UN uh, uh, biospheres and, and biodiversity areas, or these bio, uh, yeah, biodiversity, biosphere, biospheres. Yeah. Okay, water is going to, you know, our next war could very well be fought over water, and, and the United Nations has their hand, as you said, has their hand in this. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, i, I got to tell you, for the United Nations to, to get in here to the United States and to dictate to the United States, which is what they're ultimately going to do, um, how much water you can use. But look, they've already clamped down on how many, you know, like 1.28 gallons per flush of a toilet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they so, got the smart meters on the house to, that's right. to mess with uh, the amount of electricity and you know and a lot of air conditioning. But see, a lot of people heat. don't get that. That you know, where did the, where did that one point two eight gallons come from? Well, for a toilet flush. Well, yeah, obviously it was it was by our our law. I mean, by by the uh, congressional law, uh, you know, by the Congress and everything. But originally, this is an agenda twenty one slash United Nations NGO type operation. Yeah, and it's going to get worse. Yes, it is. We got callers on the line. I think we're going to start off with callers right now. We're going to go to area code four zero three first. You are on the air with the Hagman and Magman report. Yes. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for taking my call. Well, good uh, evening. What? What? Sure. I was. Gonna, I, I was just going to say what's important to you. Instead, I'm talking over you. But go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> Concerning those earthquakes, I don't know if you've also noticed they had another swarm off of the coast of El Salvador, and I think they had a 7.4 yes. on that one, and it's also on the same, uh, I think it's on the San Andreas Fault, so it's all on the same line. So you've got those two earthquake swarms talking to each other, so to speak. Now, now, are, are you well-versed in earthquakes? I mean, do you follow this a lot? I am watching it a lot. Uh, I get uh, the information off the USGS site. Um, typically, the link was from uh, Steve Quell's site. Okay. And I've watched that over the years. What's this telling you? What's going on in your in your mind here with these earthquake swarms? These, you know, that we're seeing. Um, physically, it looks like what's happening right now is the stress is being relieved at one point and is now transferring it to another point. And right now, they're all, these two points seem to be talking back and forth to each other. And once the one stress is passed to the next one, where's the next point that the stress is going to be released on? Because you'll have pressure building up one side being released on the other side, and that side is now going to you, you unbalance things. So the next point down is now building up stress, and it's going to push harder on the side that just, release the stress. So it's almost like a slinky toy going back and forth here. Where's the next point that's going to start shaking? Can, can, can you, based on your analysis, do you have a, an idea? Um, even, even, a, even if it's a swag, you know, just a wild scientific, you know, wild, you know what, guess. Um, well, you've... You've, you've got the areas in California uh, above uh, Centralia, uh, so the pressure is building up there again in uh, San Francisco, L.A. Uh, it's probably putting more pressure off the coast of Oregon and uh, Vancouver Island. Uh, that one they're concerned with, uh, uh, if it lets loose, it may actually produce a very strong quake. Okay. Uh, especially some of the prophecies talk about numbers that are off the Richter scale. I won't go there, but this is an area. Uh, it's still all on the ring of fire. And then you look on the other side in Indonesia, uh, they were starting to have uh, uh, other quakes there, but they weren't swarming like they are in, uh, off of uh, uh, El Salvador and California. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, all right. Well, um, continue with that line of thought. I, I, I'm intrigued because you know it sounds like you have a good understanding of this, um, and it also sounds like you're a Canadian. 
Yes, I am. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, what, what, what do you, I mean, what, what, what can you expect to see in the next, you know, uh, will this be pressure be released shortly? I mean, uh, seeing the swarm of this many quakes, um, you know, across the, the same tectonic plate, you had the 7.4, you just had a 5.0 plus the swarm in California and in El Salvador. Um, can we expect to see something soon? Um, yeah, and, and, really, and call, and we're not we're not we're not above talking about prophecy either. So, you know, I, I mean, if you see something that kind of fits with that, so you know, both of our questions. Go ahead. Uh, it's anybody's guess as to what's actually happening underground. Uh, some of the world's best experts have been scratching their head for centuries. So, I'm not about to unravel it tonight. Um, <laughs> But if the pressure is being released at one point, it's going to create pressure somewhere else. Right. Okay. And the question is, where is that other point, and can it withstand what is being released right now, or will it pop itself? And mm. all the way, you know, uh, I think it's been about two years ago when you let, had the last, two or three years ago when you had the last swarm, that lasted several weeks just south of Centralia into the northern Baja, uh, Mexicali, and then they finally had that massive quake about three years back, uh, just after, or right around the Easter Point, um, that hit uh, northern Mexico there in uh, Mexicali. Right. Um, <clears throat> since then, it has died out. And I think there had been a swarm since then, and it's quietened down. There was nothing major, staying at about two, three, two, five, in that area. And now all of a sudden, this picked up uh, since Saturday. Uh, you're looking at almost 20 an hour of these quakes hmm. at some of the times when you start going back and looking at the times they occur. So it is quite substantial. Will it cause uh, enough pressure to build for something else to shear. And, of course, the worst-case scenario is if it's off of off in uh, Oregon and you have plate slippage, uh, not so much slippage, but where it gets pushed down, and then you have the situation as in Sumatra and Fukushima. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. If, 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 if you just have slippage... There's no real displacement of water. But if you have the plates shifting up or down, then you're going to have a uh, potential tsunami if it is a large enough quake. So slippage is... is what slippage? Um, the, uh, slippage one the is one plate rubbing against the other. Uh, you put your hands in the water and draw them past each other, nothing much happens. But if you move your hands up and down, uh, all of okay. a sudden you're creating water displacement. Okay, I, now I understand. Okay. Good, 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 uh, and that, good explanation. Okay. Uh, and, and that's what would create uh, something we don't want to happen, uh, the tsunami. Right. Is there anything? Uh, wow. Yeah, so, uh, now, now, it, w w in your estimation, I, 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 the 403 area code is, is what, I think, Western Canada? Is, is that? Uh, Western Canada, uh, through Vancouver, Vancouver, Ireland, uh, it's just off of Washington State, off of uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, how, and it's, yeah, how do you feel like, uh, for example, being on the west, Western part of Canada is that a hot area right now for me because of the the, the earthquakes? I mean, um, for, for where I am, I'm just outside of Calgary, Alberta, so I'm basically high and dry, and we don't have earthquakes up here. Okay, but and any tsunami should not hit us at all. We're what uh, three thousand feet above sea level. Uh, Vancouver Island, uh, Vancouver, Portland, uh, Seattle. Is much closer to the water, and uh, I don't think I don't think it was AC Valdez. Um, there was another prophet back in the 1920s, 1930s, 
that had come up into the Vancouver area. I think it might actually be recorded on uh, Steve Quayle's prophecy site. He's got a bunch of the uh, prophecies there. Right. But he'd seen an earth, uh, a tsunami that came in that supposedly went all the way up to Hope, which is 100 miles inland. Right. Uh, the Fraser Valley. Um, which would definitely be something that the West Coast itself would not like. And yes, they do have regular small earthquakes uh, off of the coast of Vancouver Island. Uh, up uh, near Tofino, they have uh, small ones on a somewhat regular basis. Um, but again, if there's a large one somewhere off Portland, it's anybody's guess as to what's going to happen. Mm. Wow. Well, thanks for your call. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else uh, before we let you go? Oh, yeah. I'll pick on the other hot topic on the other side of the co- um, continent. Isaac. Yes. Uh, you, you were making a couple of the dot connections. Uh, it's, yes, it's been seven years since Katrina. Katrina happened also at the end of the expulsion of the Jewish people from Gaza. From Gush Katif. Uh, yes. From Gush Katif. <laughs> And basically, if I understand it correct, after they finished bulldozing the houses within 24 hours, Katrina hit. Correct. But tomorrow, uh, there's supposed to be another expulsion uh, just north of Jerusalem in Modain. Is that is it the same one from a couple weeks ago that we reported on where there were, uh, I think, 13 families? or No, this is... Uh, we might have said... Well, yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that broadcast. Okay, now, um, how much area is involved in this new uh, expulsion? Uh, probably about two or three square miles, if that. Okay. Um, right. It's uh, 10, 15 families. Uh, supposedly they have bought the land from the new claimies who, of um, air population that have supposedly owned it. And they have a uh, petition before the Israeli Supreme Court, which is to be uh, judged on tomorrow, which is the expulsion date, as to whether it's legitimate or not. Oh. But there seems to be pressure to make this thing happen. Is that pressure coming from the U.S.? And if it is, is it similar to what was happening with Katrina, or not excuse me, Katrina, but out of uh, Gaza? Right. Which is the peace area. And now we have another uh, potential hurricane. It's supposed to be hurricane status later on tonight, and possibly a two by the time it hits um, New Orleans. Um, Mm -hmm. Is there a parallel here? Well, yeah, there definitely is. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see how Isaac turns, uh, if it turns into a hurricane and how big of a hurricane and yeah uh, i i believe measure for measure i do and i think at this point all bets are off because now it's uh you know now it, it it's we've we've it's passed it. way beyond that yeah yeah it, the it, first one was a warning yeah uh the second part of that and i'm not sure whose website i was reading it on uh but as it was seven years ago this is also the week of decadence in new orleans where you have uh, the gay pride and all of those guys strutting their stuff. <laughs> wow. Well, we, we have a trifecta then, basically. Mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, and a third item, uh, just a quick question, Mr. Hagman, that you were talking on the Tamar Yuma show on Sunday. I was listening to that one also. Yes. Have you found out anything more about what was happening in Egypt? Well... Uh, yeah, and, and folks, for those who listen, uh, those listeners who don't understand what the question was about, I was on the Tamar Yona show out of uh, uh, Jerusalem, out of Israel, uh, on Sunday morning, and uh, the question was, what's taking place in Egypt, and you know, are, are there really crucifixions going on and, and such? Um, the uh, to answer your question, sir, as as best that as best we can find out, that I can find out. The Coptic Christians are on the run. Uh, the pressure is building against them. All Christians in Egypt are uh, 
really, uh, you know, it, it, to the point of being persecuted. And uh, they're ha- out of town. right, and there have been okay, and and I, and I, I don't know how else to to confirm this. Um, and I was a little bit uh, surprised by, by tomorrow's uh, qu- question a little bit. I mean, uh, not surprised, just, you know, uh, who wouldn't expect this? But there have been uh, killings. Uh, in Sky News, you know, one of the biggest uh, overseas reporting agencies to sanitize their website. Uh, for, they, they had images of these crucifixions that were, were republished on the Arabic language terrorist websites. Well, actually, they were hot linked, not not republished. So when Sky News scrubbed the, the photograph photographs, uh, they they went off of the uh, the uh, Arabic language sites as well. But yes, look, and it's only going to get worse, sir. It's only going to get worse. The per, uh, persecution yeah. of Christians and and Morsi, don't forget, was American educated. Is and he's hand in hand with Obama. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's just a matter of time when it's coming to here, when it's coming to America, when it's coming to Canada. You know? Oh, I know. Uh, I, I have a feeling, though, that uh, the U.S. is going to be getting uh, the, work, the brunt of whatever is coming. Yes. And uh, we will be seriously hurt up here. Uh, after all, you are one of our biggest trading partners. So yeah. if you're hurt, like the old adage is, uh, when you sneeze, we catch the influenza. <laughs> I, I yeah yeah I, I I've always liked that. Uh, I, I I don't and it's not meant to demean you, but I think that we're you know we're that close, uh, and, and I think that you know in that spirit. And uh, with that call, we got to let you go. We got a whole bunch of other calls on the line. We appreciate your call. Great call. Call back again anytime, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we are going to go to area code 808. You're on the air with the Hagman and Hagman Report. Hey, Aloha. I was just calling up to listen. Okay, we'll put you back on hold. This uh, is this, this quiet guy. Just uh, aloha to y'all and to the, to the family. They know who they are. Okay. God, God bless you. Aloha. All right. Uh, you know, I, I'll tell you what. We are reaching, if folks. I, I really, I, I'm so excited. We are reaching so many people, so many people out there, mm-hmm. so many different countries. I'm just, it's, I just, I, I, I'm just. Yeah. I got a Chris Matthews tingle down my leg. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> All right, area code seven zero four. You're on the air with the Hagman and Hagman Report. I'm just listening, Joe. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. And I guess we're going to go to, uh, let's see, area code 484. Yeah, we're going to have to get a professional score, call Jim. timer in here. Jim, you're online with hey. the Hagman and Hagman Report. Hey, how you doing? Um, yeah, I was just giving a call. Um, I'm just so thankful for everything that's going on right now. But did you guys hear of the new Obama movie that came out in 2016? Oh, yes. Yes. Did, did, have you seen it? Powerful. Did yes, I've seen that, it right away. <laughs> um. And I'm not agreeing with every single thing that's in that movie, but that is, that is really powerful that they actually went to Africa and interviewed um, Obama's father, uh, friends that he used to be with, his uh, half-brother. And if you look at it, that guy looks exactly like a really dark Obama. And I'm a black man myself, and it really gets to me when I try to tell people about Obama. And it's almost like they're defending Christ when, when they're the way they defend Obama. It's almost like it's the religion that you're coming at. Right. I was speaking to people today on Facebook, just it, it really it's nerve wracking because it seems like it really they really are the mind control is really happening. And once you at least some people are opening their minds to it. Once you at least see that how brainwashed people are about Obama, that goes in almost any race or anything. Then you'll start to see even more of what's going on in the government and, and all around the world around us. Yeah, I agree with you, caller, and I think the worst part is is that not only do they defend him, you could have evidence, uh, you know, show them many things that he has done uh, that are horrible, and yet they still ignore them or refuse to believe them. And well, well, call, well let me ask you something, caller. As, as an African American or black, as a black man yourself, okay? Do, do you do you do you believe? The that the, the the average white person in America 
is really uh, there's a racial component against Obama. I, I mean, if if Obama was, I mean, is there an element of racism here in, in your estimation? In that movie, they bring up that topic and pretty much say how Obama's a perfect uh, type of black man for white, black, Chinese, whoever to kind of like because he's that type. This is how his personality is. But it's really a deception, and I think it does play a big part on racism, but also on on the blacks. I can pick them right away because the, the biggest racial act they do is not knowing anything about Obama, things that he had passed, and then some of them being so stupid. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like so stupid to say that the only thing that they can stand on is that Osama bin Laden was killed while he was in office. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most stupid, that's one of the main things that's been happening. I showed the NDAA Act, the, uh, the um, Patriot Act, all these uh, things that he is signing, and people just ignore it and look over it. And then I still believe that the reason why he's in office is no ma is completely just so people can try and see history, and it's just the easiest way to deceive people and to bring an end and end up you up to get someone to. And I still believe if something does happen to Obama, like you said, Joe Biden will come on and take over just to keep it going on, so people will think that everything we're bringing up is false. Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah, I, I, look, I don't think anything is going to happen to Obama. I really don't. I think that, that there's going to be a, a false flag that's going to draw empathy and sympathy toward the Obama family and to the Democratic Party and to the White House and to the uh, upper echelon of, of the power structure. But I really don't think it, it, it's going to be a false flag type scenario. That's what I believe. Yeah, I doubt it, too, because I still believe that there's a chance that he could be the Antichrist because he's right in the, that field of everybody trying to follow him. Mm. They just ignoring what's going on. Like, I'll convict Christians all the time, African-American Christians, too, specifically, and say, who are you going to support more, Christ or Obama? And it's like they just don't want My mom said the other day, I just don't want to hear it anymore. My grandma says he would get a tattoo. My grandma is, is so against tattoos. She would get a tattoo of Obama, of Obama on her wrist. I mean, on her anywhere on her body. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's ridiculous. I, I think it's a spiritual thing also. Wow. That's powerful. I mean, you, you know, really, when you, when you think about it that way, that, yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you. It's just mind control. Well, yeah, I, and I believe that, uh, Carl. I'll tell you what. And, uh, you know, I, I thank you for your courage and standing up. And, and uh, look, you got to have guts. I mean, look, uh, yeah. as a black as a black man, you got to have yeah. guts to do what you're doing and say, hey, look, you know. Yeah, so much of the, the terrible yeah. things that have happened throughout society, how we have gotten this far morally uh, is by people just following along with the crowd, you know, uh, trying to fit in. Yeah. Nobody is independent. Nobody thinks for themselves or wants to stand for, you know, what's right, not stand with the rest of their friends. So, yeah. um, and that's a mindset for everyone. And uh, it's sad to see uh, it happen so much here in America. It's happening with the music that we're listening to, the, the TV that we watch. I noticed that I, I've been to about the Illuminati and every single thing about it for like maybe four or five years now. But I still would catch myself falling off and getting sucked right back into the TV or listening to music again. Mm -hmm. And all those things is in the Bible saying that that's going to happen in the end times. I spoke to a pastor at my church, and um, my church is not that woke like that, but he was convicted when I showed him Ezekiel 33, and he already knows about Illuminati and everything like that. Now he's posting the things, and I, believe, I remember I called before about my church being awoken to it. Oh, yeah. Now I believe my main pastor is going to probably have a sermon about, about it now. Wow. Well, that's great. Look, you know, we need to, we need these churches to, to be awake. I know our uh, the church I the, I go to. Um, it's interesting because out of the blue, it was almost as if the pastor was talking to me on Sunday, said something that it just hit me right between the eyes, and I thought, wow. You talk about divine providence and being in the right place and, you know, knowing that this person, that this yeah. church is awake. So, yeah, it's good. It's good, man. And, and you know what? I got I got an email from Elizabeth um, 
but that that's not your uh, your email name, is it? <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, <laughs> saying uh, praise God, our church is awake, and, and she went on to describe the, uh, the, the 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 things that are happening with her church. So, so you know, it yeah. seems like people are waking up. This is a good thing. Yeah, it's really powerful. Huh? Uh, uh-huh. I'm about to uh, hang up and get back to work. All right, I buddy. just wanted to bring up one more thing. Yeah. Have you uh, noticed any emails about how the mosquitoes are starting to get a lot more in number now? I've seen um, different posts on that. Uh, I think I got one email about the mosquitoes. Somebody sending me a link about those. Right. Are those... Yeah, I'm a PA. Yeah, okay, okay. Um are those gen- genetically modified mosquito releases, or is this something else? No, I'm I'm just seeing them in person just right now myself. Oh, okay. They're a lot bigger than they normally are. And I just wanted to throw that out there because that would be very easy for them to genetically modify that without people knowing. They have already done that, actually. We uh, covered a story where they released over 20,000 genetically modified mosquitoes in Florida this spring, and these mosquitoes pollinate or, or reproduce with other mosquitoes, turning them into the genetically modified mosquitoes. It's kind of like the Africanized bees, wow. almost, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, if we look at, for example, the West Nile virus and, and how that got started in, in New York uh, in New York, and where it came from, and I mean, this is all, again, this is all part of a larger plan, so nothing but uh, yeah. Surprise me, but uh, will you get back to Bill Clinton? Tried to apologize, but it didn't work. About <laughs> <laughs> the MK, yeah, 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 yeah. from the uh, experiment, yeah, yeah, yeah. So much for that. Uh, but, but, but he's going to be uh, front and center at the convention at the, at the Democratic convention, I believe. And uh, and I've been yeah. seeing I've been seeing him doing a lot of commercials for Obama. And folks, I'm going to tell you, Marika is going to be talking about this on Wednesday as well. There's something going on here with with Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and the Obamas. Yes. You know, there's something very, yeah. very bad. But, uh, well, thanks for the call, Jim. Okay. Yeah, if, and I just want to say, if anything, if y'all can uh, try to promote that old, that new movie that is out, as a documentary. Oh, we'll do. We'll do. Absolutely. Twenty six. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a uh, look. Um, uh, and, and thanks, Carl. Yeah, I I, I talked to oh, saw that today. Oh, uh, yeah, today. Okay, okay. And uh, in addition to this caller, and they said it's uh, very. Uh, um, what's the word? Well, they they used moving and, and very spiritual. It touched them spiritually. And, and I'm not talking about a person that would you know. And, and I don't think that was the intent of the movie. I mean, there's this mm-hmm. the intent was not spirituality. It was fact. It was documentary. But yeah. A couple more uh, news, important news stories we want to get into here. Russia yeah. joins U.S. Canada for military drills. Uh-huh. Watchful Eagle headquarters to be in Colorado, Alaska. Uh, Moscow, a group from the Russian Armed Forces will take part in the military drills within with the U.S. and Canada to be held next Monday in North America, a military official said. The Watchful Eagle 2012 anti-terrorism ex- exercise slated for August 27th through the 29th will take place in the U.S. and Canada. The first group of Russian forces, including air officials from the Eastern Military District, have left Moscow and would join at the Colorado headquarters in the U.S., uh, reported... Now, callers and and listeners. Zanua. Now, now, folks, listening to this program live and callers, explain to me, number one, we've got Russia, a joint Russia-U.S. exercise. We have Colorado... Uh, what else did that was in there? Um, we, we've got, uh, uh, yeah, okay. So we've got, we, we got number one. It's we're we're looking back at Colorado, here. Alaska. Uh, okay, uh, and Canada. I'm sorry. We, we've got the uh, Canadian involvement, and uh, this is not right. This is not right. No. I, I don't care what people. You know, there are people on the other. Uh, for example, I've heard from military personnel say, "Wait, we've done this before," or the, the, but not to, not like this, not to this extent. Yeah, this and the title the- of that article is "Russia Joins U.S. Canada for Military Drills: Watch Full Eagle HQ yeah. to Be in Colorado, Alaska." Also in news today, France urge, France urges Syrian President. Uh, I'm sorry, France urges Syrian Free Army. To, or opposition to form a new government. 
uh, France will recognize a provisional Syrian government as soon as it has been formed. Uh, President Fran Francosis Hollandale said on Monday, using Syria's uh, fractured political opposition to establish one as soon as possible, and they will have the backing fully of France. Even though Syria already does have a legitimate established government, this is more of the push, especially from the socialist uh, French president, to back the West and NATO efforts in uh, undermining the Syrian regime by helping the Taliban and Al-Qaeda overthrow another country to take political control or of the appearance of having political control, right. um, and then they can get it taken away from them, uh, you know, as soon as they want. You know, the U.S. can put up all these prop governments in, in Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and Al-Qaeda in Libya and take them out whenever they want to, just like they did with Gaddafi. And, uh, That's right. I mean, Mubarak. these people are yep. dispendable. Uh, also, Empire State Building shootings last week. I know we mentioned this, but all it came out. It turns out that all the bystanders were shot by police. The only person uh, that was shot by the shooter was the employee or his boss. All other people there were shot by the police. Okay, but to be fair, there was some ricochet. There were some, you know, ricochets. It so. says police be appear to be at fault for all nine people injured during the recent shooting incident at the Empire State Building. Says NYPD Commissioner Raymond Kelly. Right. No, no, no I'm not sticking up for the police. Believe me. No, I'm just saying that. Uh, uh, you know, that I, I just find that interesting. I know they had a gunman who shot somebody. Right. Uh, but. When you're in a situation where you're in a crowd of people, you have to, you know, especially being a police officer, be very careful. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, but okay, but, but look, you know, th this weekend is Forrester and Dirty Harry movies are on, and, and not everyone's Dirty Harry with a handgun. But but, but then again, to, to for officers to fire, what I think it was like, how many shots did they fire? Like, th like a whole bunch of shots. Yeah, and then wounding nine people, nine bystanders. To me, it tells us that uh, tells me anyway. Somebody needs to go to the range. Number one and number two, uh, uh, the the uh, 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 <laughs> well, just go to get to the range. But I had a problem with Bloomberg coming out right away and 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 kind of dissing the the, the police officers uh, at, at the time. Yeah, I didn't I, see I, just, that. I didn't like that. I didn't like the methods he used. But then again, I don't like uh, police officers shooting innocent bystanders. Right. Uh, but there are ways to talk about that than, than that way. By the way, speaking of people of dissing other people, uh, Obama and the Catholic Cardinal Dolan. <laughs> Look, uh, the Cardinal Dolan, uh, you don't have to be a Catholic to appreciate this. But understand this. Obama has a definite prejudice against Christi Christianity and Christians. A very strong prejudice against him. Uh, Cardinal Dolan is perhaps the the most visible representative of the of the, of the Catholic uh, faith. He's going to be delivering uh, the uh, opening prayer at the RNC, and that's fine. He offered his services to the DNC, and they declined. Instead, um, they're going to have uh, uh, twenty thousand twenty thousand Muslims there. And actually, uh, so it, it, it it's uh, no it's the grand uh, imam for. I mean, we have a, a cast of people being featured at the DNC who are the uh, leaders of pro-abortion yeah. movements. Yeah. We have now twenty thousand Muslims in being invited uh, to the DNC, and it just goes to show you the um, extreme positions and uh, in how far the Democratic Party has come from being Democratic. And I heard today on, uh, I'm not sure, the Tom Hartman show uh, oh, yeah. on, the, on the left. Good old Tom. Yeah, and they were talking, yeah. about, he was talking about, you know, we need to restore democracy and democracy this and democracy well, that. We democracy have now a constitutional the republic. That's correct. We do not have a democracy. And uh, these people are by changing and then putting in everybody's minds, if you ask, you know, 70, 80% of the people in America probably think it's a democracy, not a republic. Well, that's more of a rule. Right. And, um, you know, they keep using this, oh, we need to restore democracy. No, we don't. We need to restore the republic. And I just think that 
Um, we need to restore the using that language, you know, the, the democracy. That's what they're trying to promote in the Middle East as trying to, uh, as the, the end result for their overthrow of government. But really, that's not at all what comes in. It's religious, extreme religious oppression. Uh, people who are ready to, you know, kill the Christians and wipe out certain ethnic groups. And that's their goal. That's their agenda. And if you don't buy that of them, you're going to be next regardless of what color, race, religion you are. Thanks for listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report. We are going to break. We will be back in a few short minutes. Stay with us. We'll be taking your calls on the other side and much more news. <clears throat> Hi folks, Doug Hagman here. You might know me as the co-host from the Hagman and Hagman Report or as a frequent guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. If you're like me, you're tired and confused over today's headlines, you just don't know where to turn for accurate, concise information about really what's going on, what's truly going on in today's society. If you don't know where to turn for accurate, well-researched, and properly vetted news, I've got a suggestion. In fact, it's a requirement. Bookmark Canada Free Press. That's CanadaFreePress.com on the Internet. It's just not for Canada. It's for news across the world. Judy McLeod, founding editor, has put together a vast array of talented writers like Kelly O'Connell, Daniel Greenfield, Dr. Eileen Johnson-Powell, a lot of guest columnists, very talented writers. Folks, that's Canada Free Press at CanadaFreePress.com. Now mobile-friendly. Follow on Facebook, because without America, there is no free world. Survival of the fittest. In any and all situations, survival is your number one priority. That requires being tough and thinking smart. And the folks at Freeze Dry Guy are going to help you do just that. They have a long-range patrol ration entrees, what they call the Brick Pack. When you're in survival mode, it is absolutely the best item for your survival pack or bug-out bag. You can go farther, faster, and carry more food with the LRP cold weather ration entrees. Not only do these long-lasting, durable entrees help sustain you or your family through the harshest environment or situation, they are by far the most delicious of their kind. No contest. With a variety of tasty entrees, you can't beat the LRP Brick Packs. Let Freeze Dry Guy help you in your survival situations. Go to freezedryguy.com. That's freezedryguy.com. Or call 866-404-3663. That's 866-404-FOOD. And folks, definitely, if you are looking for a food storage place, someone knowledgeable about food storage, contact the Freeze Dry Guy. Go to our website, homelandsecurityus.com, click on the ad on the right, get a hold of the Freeze Dry Guy, tell him what you need, or tell him your situation, ask him what you need, find out what the specials are for August, find out what the specials are for September, but get prepared. I'm going to tell you, one of the best, in fact, uh, Folks, get it soon because these freeze-dry meals are running short. That's the freeze-dry guy off of HomelandSecurityUS.com. And tell them Doug and Joe sent you. If you are stumped, you don't know what kind of gift to give to a friend or a loved one, I'm telling you, you must go to 4physics.com. That's the numeral 4, P-H-Y-S-I-C-S dot com. This is your one-stop shopping palace. That's the only way I can put it. I could spend easily an hour on this website. Innovative, fun, educational. There are games, books, weather instruments, unique time-telling devices, jewelry, optical devices, laboratory equipment. Let me give you an example. We all know we can tell time. With a sundial, you've seen those advertised. Did you know that you could tell time by the stars? At 4physics.com, you can buy a horologium nocturnum. This was a navigational device used in the 15th century by navigators at night to tell time by the stars. It's beautifully crafted in the shape of a pendant made of bronze and pewter or gold and silver. Absolutely a stunning gift. I would be proud to give it to anyone. You must go to 4physics.com. Even if you're not stumped, that's 4physics. That's the numeral.
numeral four P H Y S I C S dot com. It's your one stop shopping palace. Any problems that you have, I don't know what to get grandpa, I don't know what to get my loved one that's unique, you will find it at 4physics.com. Please take my word for it, go to the website, but give yourself a lot of time because you're not going to want to leave 4physics.com. Doug Hagman, one guy that doesn't need a bullhorn to get your attention. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to hour number two of this Monday, August 27th edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. My name is Joe Hagman. My co-host is Doug Hagman. Together, we are the premier father-son internet radio show team. Also on video at Homeland Security US one dot TK. With that, our second hour will be getting into more news stories and taking your calls at 661-244-9839. That's 661-244-9839. Starting off this hour, uh, I found this story here. The courts will soon decide if police can sample your DNA without a warrant. This is troubling for a lot of reasons. Yeah. U.S. courts will soon decide whether Americans can have their expectations of privacy over their own DNA. Uh, The reporter from the recorder uh, writes, Michael Reiser out of the ACLU, Northern California, is challenging a California law that requires all felony arrests to give a DNA sample. He argues Americans don't want government to have all the information about us. The government does not have the right to demand our genetic material. That's correct. And including this wealth of personal information that holds, even if it promises to only use it for law enforcement, uh, Reiser claims. So he's saying, you know, they don't need more information on us when they sure. already have this. Um, and, and they're they keeping say, a database on all uh, the DNA that, that they're collecting. They're keeping a database on all of us. Yeah, it says that concern is already playing out in terms of other ways the government collects data on innocent Americans without a warrant, um, and that goes from drones to uh, you know all kinds of different methods of surveillance. So the head of the CIA said your dishwasher is spying on you. We know that TVs, uh, you know. Well, yeah, it, 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 maybe capability, right. microphones, even light bulbs, they say, can transmit data about you. The fluorescent lights do that uh, efficiently, Very, as a matter of fact. But, but think about this. What's that large location in, in the middle of the United States that's owned by the National Security Agency? What do they do? I'm going to tell you what they do. They match. They, they, okay. When you, when, for example, you go in for a DMV, uh, your license, they take your photograph. They take your photograph uh, when you're at kiosks. You buy a ticket, they take your photograph. Did you yeah. know that? They take your photograph um, when you're walking down the street. They also There's facial recognition software. They match up every record to to. So this this building is a database. Yeah, they have those on everybody. centers. Well, those fusion centers are little puppy, little baby uh, right. centers. But this this NSA operated massive uh, behemoth of uh, of a center is actually collecting. It's like having a file. Uh, back in the fifties, for example, the FBI would have a file on you. You know, if you were, we'll say, a suspected communist or whatever, or a, a political dissident, the FBI would have a file on you. Uh, actual hard copy file, and of course Hoover had his own, and so on, but. But imagine this, not doing anything, just being an American citizen, and, and everything's being collected. Mm-hmm. But if you are an American citizen and you're a Christian and you're pro-life and you're anti-abortion and you're uh, outspoken, then you know there might be a little flag by your name, by, your, by the virtual database that they have. So how easy would it be, Joe, 
for them to say, all right, yeah, so Joe Hagman's file right here, look at this, he's got, uh, you know, he's got three or four flags next to him, um, okay, we're, we're going to implement, uh, you know, the, the, the stage one of, of mm -hmm. whatever, he goes, he goes first. All the people with the three or four stars or flags or check marks next to their name, they go first. Mm -hmm. That's what it's coming down to. Yeah. And then uh, other news that we reported on last year, Russia and China were moving away from the dollar. Yes. Yes. Well, now they're saying that the, the yuan uh, tipped to replace U.S. dollar euro in Southeast Asia. They say the Chinese currency would eventually be used as an alternative to the dollar and the euro by That's countries right. in Southeast Asia, experts say. So, basically, uh, you know, China and all the countries in East Asia, uh, as well as Russia, was following suit last year, according to reports, will be getting away from the US dollar we are witnessing the demise of our uh, of our fiat currency which is a, in a way a good thing but it's not good for us and not and, and, you know if the US dollar is removed as the world's reserve That's currency right. status then no that would be uh, we would have huge financial implications that would be horrible That's correct uh, for our pocketbooks where it would really turn us into a third world country at a much faster rate but from what I see this report is just talking about move the dollar out of the Eastern Asia countries or right. the Asian countries but still would have a huge effect on the dollar because uh, all the money that is in circulation and you know when that comes back around and nobody wants it uh, that's when the hyperinflation starts and you know where we go from there yeah but, well now I, I've got folks I don't know whether you heard about this you remember back in September of last year the Council on American Islamic Relations Care, the unindicted co-conspirator in the largest Hamas terrorist uh, uh, trial, uh, financial terrorist trial in, in the country, the Holy Land Foundation trial. These thugs, the Council on American Islamic Relations, yes, I said thugs care, because by definition, I suppose, if you're an unindicted co-conspirator, that, uh, that could be synonymous. Well, guess what? They're demanding, and they have demanded, this is last September, that the FBI remove all anti-Muslim bias. This is material they call anti-Muslim bias uh, from their training systems. Now, this, there was a press release issued back in September, September 21st, where uh, the CARE joined a coalition of other advocates, yeah, and <laughs> Other groups, uh, pro-Islamic organizations, calling for the FBI to just completely remove, tear out, rip out any type of Muslim bias uh, from the uh, from the training system. Now we're finding out today now uh, that this has been ratcheted up a little bit. The Islamic Circle of North America, the ICNA, which is kind of a lesser-known part of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, they're, they've got ties directly to Jamaat El, uh, uh, El Islamia or J Jamaat uh, uh, Islami organizations in Southeast Asia. They are now uh, jumping on the bandwagon and, and also, um, in addition to holding uh, certain conventions for uh, or certain uh, uh, seminars to, to teach people how to um, infiltrate in. Uh, uh, get the any type of anti-Islamic sentiment from or anti-Islamic facts from from these uh, training sessions, whether it be FBI or local police departments. This is taking place right now, and the Muslim Brotherhood is in fact behind both of these organizations. Both of these organizations are pushing for this, and they are actually redefining uh, what terrorism is in America, and this is uh, also being shored up by various United States judges, judges across the country. So folks, watch out for this. It's it's under, it's new stuff going on right now. Mm -hmm. And more Agenda 21 news here. New York Times calls for a carbon tax. Don't expect to hear much about climate change at the RNC, or the, both conventions, I'm sorry. There will be plenty of speeches about unemployment, deficits, and immediate problems, but threats posed by global warming are decades away, or so we have been told repeatedly in recent years. 
Many climate scientists, however, are now pointing to evidence linking rising global temperatures to the extreme weather we're seeing around the planet. The United States has just endured its hottest 12-month period on record. As you said. The yeah, worst drought yeah. in a generation has parched the nation's crop belt. Floods happened once a century now occur every few years. With distressing images of weather-related disasters saturating the news media, climate change uh, no longer seems such a distant and abstract worry, except perhaps in Washington. In 2009, President Obama persuaded House Democrats then in the majority to pass a bill aimed at curbing greenhouse gas emissions, facing a Republican filibuster in the Senate. However, the legislation died, and its prospects d uh, dimmed further when Republicans took control of the House in 2010. Mr. Obama has remained relatively silent on the issue but it looks like they are going to be ratcheting talk up again to bring back carbon taxes as uh, this agenda this agenda of, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. evil, uh, we'll call it, um, the satanic agenda of money-sucking the synagogue of Satan, as the Bible describes it, I guess, uh, is the best way to describe it. Um, I'm pulling up this article here. I want to get it right from the New York Times. Um Let's see. And what they want to do is, uh, I'm sure, start, you know, taxing people on how much breath, you know, if you want to breathe, uh, if you want to run your car, if you want to, uh, you know, I'm sure taxi drivers will, will be part of this. There's going to be a whole, uh, if they implement some kind of carbon tax, uh, we are going to see a huge repercussion financially. Um, it goes on to say that it's even crazier than that. October eighth, two thousand nine, folks. Obama issued Executive Order thirteen five one four. What did that order do? It ordered the Defense Department and other agencies to reduce carbon dioxide emissions and other the, uh, the so-called greenhouse gases from where? Guess where? From our military ships, from our uh, from the very ships, the nuclear uh, ships that carry our our, our missiles that defend our country, that defend this country. But it's amazing to me that they can sit here and say that <coughs> money is going to solve, by us taxing you, it's going to solve the carbon emissions problem, which well, no, makes it's no not sense to. whatsoever. This article states that um, early studies um, on the inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change estimated that a carbon tax of up to $80 per metric ton of emissions a tax that might raise gasoline prices by 70 cents a gallon would eventually, eventually result in climate stability. See, and, and that's so wrong because, look, hey, folks, <laughs> you, you want to know how much oil the United States has. <laughs> and it's not even that. I mean, but, the uh, times we live in, it, it, the it, things that are happening in nature, the uh, uh, crazy natural disasters but, we're seeing, all this chaos economically, uh, this chaos in the Middle East and throughout the world, it's all biblical. It has nothing to do... Of course it's biblical. Know. But, but look, <laughs> to be practical first, we possess 26% of the entire world's oil supply. That's a quarter of the world's oil supply. Obama says, no, it's only 2%. Well, it's only 2% if you just count the lands that you're allowed to...